This video is about the wave theory of light and it reviews some of the basic wave type aspects of light. You can get more information in your notes from quiz 2a, wave theory of light. Refraction. Refraction is the bending of a wave front that occurs whenever a wave changes speeds because it moved from one medium to another. So this is a picture of light moving from air to water. And you should know that in air, it's basically the same as going through a vacuum. So light goes the fastest speed, basically the same speed as the speed in the vacuum. And then when it goes to water, it slows down. This causes the light wave to bend. Um, the best way to think of this and what you'll need to know on the test is to be able to, to explain which way an object bends. So the best way to think of this is to uh, imagine maybe a car. Here's a car driving on a road, which of course is very easy for a car driving on a road, and then it suddenly gets in a big pile of like really thick grass. Um, so we'll take this car, for example, and assume that the car is driving in at some angle like this. Okay, the angle will come in and be something like that, that, like that. And as it drives, you can just, just ma imagine what's going to happen. And when it drives in like this, the right part of the car, this right tire here, is going to hit the grass first. And the grass is going to slow down the right side of the car. So if the right side of the car slows down, but the left side keeps going at the same speed as on a road, goes the same speed, what will happen is the, as the car enters the grass, it, the right side slows down, the left side keeps going the same speed, so it'll cause the car to turn like this, okay? And the same thing will happen with the back tire. So by the time it goes into the grass completely, it'll be traveling something like this, and you end up getting direction of travel that's more like this. And so you can look at our picture, and you can see what happens is the car turns inwards towards this dashed line. Remember, this dashed line is called the normal. So I would say that the road, as the car goes from fast to slow, it turns towards the normal because this angle here is less than the angle it was before. You should be able to do the same thing if the, if the car was going the other way. Um, here it's in the grass, driving in grass going slow. All right, so it's coming in at this angle like this. And then as it, leaves the grass, this tire here on the right hand side leaves the grass first. So this tire is going to speed up on the way off of the grass. So what that does, and the left side is still going slow. So the right goes fast and the left goes slow. It makes the car turn like that. And the same thing happens with the back tires too. So it can helps continue to make it turn. So the car would leave the grass at some, at some kind of angle like this. And you can picture it moving like that. Okay. And so now you see that the angle here, it was this angle like this. And now when it left, it left at this angle here. So now it turned away. It's a bigger angle now. So it turned away from the normal. Going from slow to fast turns away from the normal. But you don't have to memorize that. Memorize that. You just have to imagine a car driving from grass to the road. Now you can do the same thing with light, right? You can imagine light as coming in. Um, Let's say here's air and here's water. You know light travels the fastest through air, but it's almost the same as traveling through a vacuum. So here's light traveling here and it hits the water and you just imagine it being like a car, right? The light comes in and the right side, this right wheel, so to speak, hits the water first. The right wheel slows down and the left wheel keeps going fast. So it turns just like the previous example like this. So you would say if light is going from fast to slow, is going from this angle to this angle, from fast to slow, is turning towards the normal when it's going from fast to slow. You should be able to do the same thing going the other way. Imagine the light is already in the water and it's going to the air. So when it leaves the right side of it, the right side of the right tire, so to speak, hits the fast air, faster moving air first. So it makes it turn, this side moves faster and makes it, it'll make it turn this way. Okay, so you will be able to say that it turned away from the normal, away from the normal. The electromagnetic spectrum, that's the entire range of wavelengths or frequencies of electromagnetic radiation extending from the gamma rays all the way to the longest radio waves and including visible light. 
um, we took quite a bit of notes on this and basically you are going to need to understand these right here and get a basic idea of what gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, and microwaves know some of the basic properties. Um, and the main idea that um, down here are the long waves for microwaves and radio, radio waves, and then up here are the shorter waves for gamma rays. And remember, as we move up, there's more energy, so these waves tend to be more damaging. Gamma rays and x-rays tend to be more damaging. As we move down um, to microwaves and radio waves, they're less damaging. Now the rest of this little video is about the wave equation for light. This wave equation, first of all, will already kind of, will kind of help you with the electromagnetic spectrum. It's very similar. It's Well, it's basically the same equation as the wave equation we've already talked about in the earlier unit on sound waves. The only real difference is we replace V velocity with C, the speed of light in a vacuum. Um, other than that, it's the same equation. V equals frequency times wavelength. So the speed of light in a vacuum, we, as we talked about, is it's a constant, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And you're going to need that number during the quiz. The wavelength is lambda, Greek letter lambda for length. And the frequency of electromagnetic wave is F for frequency in hertz. So basically, um, what we have in this case is we know the speed of light or the speed of any electromagnetic wave in a vacuum or basically in air is constant, 3 times 10 days. So we keep that like this, it's constant. And this fundamental principle that we have here is that so as, as the wavelength increases, if it gets longer and longer wavelengths like radio waves or even microwaves that get longer wavelengths, what has to happen to frequency to keep both sides of the equation equal or constant? Well, frequency has to go down. Frequency, if wavelength goes up, frequency has to go down. So when you multiply them together, they stay that constant, 3 times 10 to the 8th. Lower frequency of radio waves means longer wavelength for radio waves. And then, at the other end of the spectrum, for gamma rays and x-rays, gamma rays have a really high frequency, and x-rays have a fairly high frequency also. So frequency goes up, and if frequency goes up, um, in order to keep both sides of the equation constant, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, wavelength has to go down. So for gamma rays, they're really, really short wavelengths. And x-rays are really short wavelengths also. So um, let's use this equation to s solve some problems that you might see on the quiz. Um, here is a problem. It says, what is the speed of a 10 to the 20 hertz x-ray waves in air. Okay, let's think about that for a moment. The speed, 10 to the 20 hertz x-rays in air. Well, this is what some students might call a trick question because, see, speed of light and therefore the speed of all electro electromagnetic waves is constant in a vacuum. It's 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay, remember I told you you're going to need that. Well, you just kind of want to know that for the quiz because it's constant. It's one of the huge fundamental constants of the universe, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's the speed of electromagnetic waves in a vacuum or basically in air. So let's try an actual problem now. What is the frequency of radio waves with a wavelength of 40 meters in air. All right, so frequency is the question. Um, the wavelength, lambda length, is 40 meters. And of course, we know the speed. It's C is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we're going to write out our wave equation. C equals frequency times wavelength. And then we're going to plug in our numbers. C, 3 times 10 to the 8th, equals uh, frequency times the wavelength times 40 meters. So in order to solve this, we have to get frequency by itself. And we have four, we're multiplying by 40. So the opposite of multiply by 40 is divide by 40. So 
these cancel, and we get frequency is 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 4. So since this is using big numbers 3 times 10 to the 8th, um, I want to give you, I want to show you an example of how to use the calculator and the EE function on the calculator to type this in and solve it. Okay, so we'll look something like this. 3 second EE e, 8 divide by 4, 0. All right, and it equals, you can see equals 7.5, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6. So 7.5 times 10 to the 6. Frequency is 7.5 times 10 to the 6. Since it's frequency, that's going to be hertz. What's our frequency radio waves with wavelength of 40 meters? 7.5 times 10 to the 6 hertz. Okay, let's do one more problem. What's the wavelength of 12 megahertz radio waves in the air? And here we get information of 1 meg is 10 to the 6, which is 1 million 10 to the 6. Okay, let's write this out. Um, frequency equals 12 megahertz. But a mega is 10 to the 6. So this is the same thing as 12 times 10 to the 6 hertz. Remember, a mega is 10 to the 6, we replace it with 10 to the 6, or that's basically 12 million. And the wavelength, that's what we're solving for. And of course, again, C is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. There it is again. So I'll write our equation, C equals frequency times wavelength. Plug in our numbers, 3 times 10 to the 8th equals frequency is tw uh, 12 times 10 to the 6 and then wavelength. So what we're going to need to do um, is to get wavelength by itself. We've got to divide both sides by 12 times 10 to the 6. 12 times 10 to the 6. And then these cancel. And we get our wavelength 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 12 times 10 to the 6. So let me show you this on the calculator. Okay, here we go. So 3 second EE 8 divided by 12 second EE 6 equals. And so it equals. 25. 25 uh, wavelength in meters. What's the wavelength of 12 megahertz radio waves near? 25 meters.